Hey everyone, welcome back. Now it's been quite some time uh, since I've gotten around to getting a video put out. So, here's a little thing to change things up. Now, do have do have the 64 and a half Mustangs still on the go and been uh, put, been chipping away at both those for quite some time now. Probably should get those dealt with soon sooner rather than later perhaps. But got a couple little things here that I've been working on on the side, including a special, kind of a specialty kit that got a friend down in the States found for me. So, before I get to it, this was a little something that I've been worked on a little, not too long ago, but just to help pass the time. It's the uh, 1906. 1966 Pontiac GTO, otherwise known as the Monkey Mobile. This one here, based on the decals, this is the uh, the early 2000s release of the kit, which 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 is this one right here, under the AMT Ertl branding ba from back in the day. Now, of course, there was also a couple other releases at prior to this and then there was a more modern re-release that came out not too long ago had this one around wasn't sure what i wanted to do with it as i don't really know anything about the monkeys other other than it was a short-lived tv series i suppose so fair to get something work on something a little bit quick quick that doesn't take that didn't take up a huge amount of time so Pretty much went ahead, got this all built up. Of course, got the removal roof. Now, I didn't think contemplate about getting the rear seat painted, but I do have that currently in the paint process, so it's absent at the moment. But I will have that installed later on. And of course, for a standard display piece, it's not really going to be that noticeable, especially on the shelf. Yeah. So, neat, decent little kit to work with. The wing windows were something I wasn't sure on how it was going how that was going to be to connect those. Cause like I was saying, like it was going to be try connect them. Wait like five or ten minutes. Wait for the for the glue to cure. But uh, to my surprise, put a couple dabs of glue onto the window onto the window frame itself. Glued the window in and set right up. Yeah, so yeah, that's worked out. So that worked out quite well. Then, of course, pretty much nothing too crazy to mention about as it's pretty much like it's kind. It's like it's got full. It's pretty much a full detail kit, even though you only really get to see the top half. So it's kind of a full kit, kind of a curbside kit, perhaps. I'm, but of course, may, I'll probably end up getting a get another one to do it more properly. Get the nose cone to fit on properly. Get rid of the seams. Some small stuff here and there. But overall, that seems quite good. Now, of course, the colors aren't exactly the most accurate, perhaps, as I was pr basically going off what I had and then what I what I was in the mood for. So that's basically that. So get that out of the way. And so now the kit that I was that friend down in the states I was mentioning and found for me is this here, the Pyro Thirty Two Custom Pickup Chevrolet. So yeah, this is an old, much older kit from my from my. From a little bit of a quick research, this was from 1966, being a first release on the, of course, being part of the tabletop series. These are the little miniature one 32nd scaled kits, so definitely much smaller. So, getting this open, did do a prior check, and everything in here is complete to my knowledge. So that in there so starting off we got the instruction booklet which 
much smaller than your standard kits of today. Single sheet, triple, that's triple folded. And of course, here's the price of all the kits back in the day. 132 scale stock cars, and by stock cars mean regular street vehicles instead of race cars. So pretty much gives you a list of couple vehicles that were for sale during the time. Probably not a huge amount of any of these kits left in the wild, of course. And there were, and from my understanding was that quite a bunch of these pyro kits were bought out by Lindbergh in the late 90s, early 2000s, which I'll show you here briefly. So, so that's basically all there is to it. Just a couple pieces glued together. And then I do have, well, yeah, I do have the, this one here, which was also part of the tabletop series, the 49 Ford Tudor Coupe in 143rd scale. So, of course, much, quite a tinier kit compared to the 24 or 25 scale kits, perhaps. But yeah, this, yeah, quite, quite another 32nd scale kit. So, getting on to the, the Chevy truck here. Now, one friend of mine mentioned that he had found this at an antique store. I was kind of hesitant to get this as not a huge, not really a huge fanatic on, G on, uh, on the likes of GM trucks, but figured since this is a much older kit and quite a scarce item, went went harm to uh, yeah add this to the collection. So of course starting here has got the main chassis, at which mainly composes of the frame, side fenders, and under engine detail of the little four cylinder that these would have came with. Hmm, looking at them as then of course you got the pickup body with the seats molded in and the rear bed. It's all quite yeah, quite a simple looking piece. Put that to the side. Then another one of the parts trees here with with the grill. Yeah, with the grill with the with molded with the molded vet. Well, yeah, molded mesh grill inserts. So that's looking, that's pretty good. And of course, got the full surround, which of course being single part like this, it makes it easier to say like, shoot it with a coat of silver paint, paint up the, the mesh, call it good. Then got the rear axles. You got the rear axle here with leaf spring and drive shaft molded in. No, and... Yeah, so far a lot of it's looking pretty good shape. Then of course to my, then of course for a thirty second scale kit, not exactly the greatest amount of detail, but just enough to make it look presentable. And got quite a large parts tree, but just a couple things taken off. Like we got, we got the headlight buckets. For the end, uh, along with the bracing that would mount to the fenders, and which is another thing that I quite like about something like this is that it's got all the locating mounts drilled out, so you have spot for the windshield frame, headlight cross members, rear axle mounts, front axle mounts, and then rear tail light mounts. So that's pretty. That's pretty good. Then a couple other small parts like what looks to be, yeah, what looks to be gas pedal, yeah, gas or brake pedal, one of those, possibly another accessory piece. And then what looks to be like a, either a license plate bracket or a ho car horn. So not entirely, not entirely sure as of yet. It's looking pretty good. And then you got, okay, these look like they'd be the proper horns that mount below the 
pro the um the proper brackets for the, or for the scaffolding I suppose for the headlight buckets. So there's a couple pieces here and there. Then we got the you got the floor pan here with the shifter already installed. Got the pedals molded in, so I guess those pieces would be for something else. Of course, locating tabs underneath. And does have another another locating tab, which let's see if I can find it. Yeah, look. Could be either fallen. Should have it here somewhere, but there does look like that's that's the mount for where the handbrake would go. Probably somewhere still in the box. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So that would be, so that's basically mounted from underneath, and of course adjust it, basically align it up from where it from where everything would sit on the frame. So go from here, mount it up. Slide the frame over top, slide the body over top, so and a little something like that. So basically that, and then got the set of six wheels, the four for the main vehicle, and then of course you have an extra, you have your two extra spare tires, which would be mounted on the fenders. It's quite nice. Now, of course, these are two piece mul two piece rims where it's where it's basically the inners and outers and then they just and then okay they'll probably be some to paint something like this I'd imagine it'd be more of a case of paint it could probably be either two ways like I'm thinking primarily it'd be paint the rim itself paint the rim the color and then uh, Mask everything off. Paint the outer tire as well. Yeah, so looks quite yeah, you know, looks quite nice. A little bit of time. I'm sure with enough time, patience can make those look really well. Then you got the convertible, or you got the retractable roof. So you got the canvas top with a nice cloth-like texture. And this just ba would just basically sit over top of the cab, mount with the windshield brackets. So that's pretty good. Front axle here with hubs, link hubs and linkages already connected. And of course got the axle already installed. So yeah, so that's pretty good. And of course these have the have your basic plastic axles and not your fancy metal axles that a lot of kits nowadays come with. So that would basically mount on like so. Be a case of either it'd be a case of paint the underside separately so you can get to the engine transmission, paint that all up, put your axles in, put the tires on, and then you're basically good to go. And then got What's quite a surprise is that you got a wind you got a clear piece for your windshield rear your rear window on the uh, for your roof. And then of course you got the headlight lenses. Which look quite nice and of course they it's a little bit cloudy but not not really heavily scuffed up, which is quite nice. Then, then of course, got finishing it off. Got yeah, got the both sections of the hood right here, which have nice locating tabs. So you go pretty much glue them together like so, sit flush with each other, and then that should that'll just be just be able to glue that onto the body like so. Of course, for for this being what would be essentially a curbside kit is that you wouldn't exact you don't you could technically have it so you can take the hood on and 
get the hood on and off, but realistically, since there's no actual engine, or at least there's no top half of the engine, it's kind of pointless to have that. So, there's that. And then, got, of course, got your front, uh, let's see, got the rear bump bumper, which just slides into the backing here. Of course, then, quite a few of these parts would be a case of paint them one color, mask it off, paint it at a, paint it the accenting color. So, yeah, so it's, it's be more of a, it's got, it's a bit more of a tedious process in terms of paint, but otherwise it wouldn't be too difficult to do. So here's the handbrake lever. What a small little piece, easily easy to confuse with just sprue and end up lost. And I'm surprised this hasn't got lost yet. As it managed to get lost in the box somehow. And then, of course, we've got here the front bumper. Which just mounts into the front bracket, front brackets, just like the rear bumper does. So that's a little bit. Yeah, so that's basically what there all is to this kit. Nothing too crazy. I'm kind of not sure if I'll ever build this or not. It do does seem like it would be a neat little build, as a bit of a change of pace from going from large kits all the way all the way down to these little small 130 second scale kits and then possibly get on to building 140 third scale kits as those would be even smaller though of course with very minimal detail so there's a little bit of a look to that and of course got the and of course might end up getting around to might build up this 49 Ford two-door coupe which is another one from the Pyro Tabletop series from back in the day. Then another kit that also went ahead and grabbed that was also part of the Lindbergh line of the 2000s that was actually its own thing instead of gone from a Pyro kit is this 1925 Ford Model T Street Rod, otherwise known as a T bucket. So, this be so pretty much be a case of build probably build up one of these Lindbergh kits as they do seem to be more more easier to find. I guess even though they are getting close to twenty years old already, even though for what is it? I believe these would be from about two thousand, yeah, two thousand six. So basically, eighteen years old. So that's quite, yeah. So that's quite the age gap. If anything, if I do end up finding the Lindbergh version of this kit, which I don't, have no doubts that I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't have any issue finding, might build, build one of them up. As be nice to have the vintage kit in the package and then of course take the more modern release and have them side by side to each other on display so yeah so that's a little bit so that's a bit of a quick look at at some things that have been on the go so Lindbergh kits probably some something in the next little next couple of weeks or so might take a while might get it to sooner but of course, main focus, take a look at this 32 Chevy pickup. Don't really know too much about it, other than, other than the fact that it's quite, quite, quite a neat little item to have. And of course, for a mid-60s kit, very few and far between to find in, a, in unbuilt and all complete. Yeah, so, which... Not totally sure about this. Might be getting close to there with the oldest kits I have in the collection. So, yeah, that was bit. So that was a quick look at this, and um, so yeah, pretty much. That'll pretty much be it for this video. So, t so pretty much. See you next time.